This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. We could not do it without you. Thanks to all of you, including Miss Music Teacher, James C. Smith, and Miranda Janelle. Coming up on DTNS, Be Real and Wordle are over. Sorry to tell you, we'll explain. Plus, Jeff Dwoskin tells us how ChatGPT has changed his podcasting life. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, April 14th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And I am very pleased to have the host of Classic Conversations, the podcast, and CEO of Stampede Social, Jeff Dwoskin. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, hey how are you? <laughs> I have I have had the honor of being on Classic Conversations, and it was very fun. So I'm so glad you, you came over to DTNS. I'm so glad to be here. That's episode 220 for anyone who wants to look it up. It's great. And the highlight of that episode was uh, me bringing up Tom's dad, Bill Merritt, who was not credited on his Wikipedia. But since we talked about it on our episode, I was able to go to Wikipedia, reference our conversation, and get Bill Merritt the due for creating Coffee Mate. So. That's amazing. That's great. I'm glad that's in there now. Thank you for thank you for doing that. All right, let's start today with the quick hits. Razer launched a $150 streaming deck called the Stream Controller X, powered by Loop Deck, with a slightly smaller but similar form factor to Elgato's Stream Deck MK2. The Stream Controller X has 15 LCD switchable key, uh, switch blade key buttons, rather, and a faceplate that users can swap around. Also lets users program multiple actions into one button by dragging them into the custom action editor. It's compatible with apps like Twitch and Adobe's Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah, and it's totally different from the Stream Deck because the logo's underneath the keys. Mm. Uh, WhatsApp introduced new security measures to help prevent your account from getting hijacked. The next time you switch to a new phone, WhatsApp will send a prompt to the old device to verify that you indeed want to switch. It has also added a background device verification to stop attackers from using a stolen WhatsApp key to send unwanted messages. And key transparency lets you confirm if a chat is encrypted with just the QR code. You won't need to verify messages message content with the recipient anymore. All three of these measures are rolling out right now, so you'll get them soon if you don't have them already. A new advocacy group for good faith security researchers called the Hacking Policy Council launched this week. Its founding members include BugCrowd, HackerOne, Google, Intel, Ingriti, and Luta Security. The group will lobby for changes to the European Union's Cyber Resilience Act, which requires disclosing vulnerabilities within 24 hours of discovery, even if no patch is available. China's Didi announced Friday that it plans to deploy its autonomous taxis 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by 2025. Also showed off its concept car, Neuron, which has a robotic arm to load your luggage and hand you a glass of water. Didi also showed off autonomous maintenance bays they can wash the car, charge them, check them out for issues, all without having to have a human around. And Didi announced its autonomous trucking business, CargoBot, reached $14.6 million in revenue in March. The Windows 11 beta preview released today includes a privacy setting for presence sensing, which lets an app detect when you're actively using a Windows powered device. The new privacy settings let you decide which apps get to use the feature. Presence sensing has positive uses, such as locking your device or speeding up authentication, extending, extending battery life, but you might not want every single app on your machine to collect that kind of data about you, so you have that option. Yeah, nice, good ad. Good ad. All right, sad news in the land of people who like to play games and or use Spotify. Yeah, so have you heard? Uh, I don't know if it's a good word or not, but Spotify is closing down Hurdle. That's H-E-R-D-L-E. Mm. It's the music guessing game like Wordle, but instead of six tries to guess a five-letter word, it's six tries to guess a popular song. Now, when Spotify bought Hurdle last July, the company said it would remain free to play for everybody. You didn't have to be a Spotify subscriber. You didn't have to pay for the game. But it didn't really say it would keep working forever. Uh -huh. Well, now we kind of know what's going on here because Hurdle mm -hmm. will shut down on May 5th. Spotify says it wants to focus on music discovery in other areas. According to web analytics firm SimilarWeb, Hurdle peaked at 69 million monthly desktop and mobile web visits in March of 2022. It was it was hot. 
had about 41 million around the time of the Spotify acquisition, so obviously it was dropping off, but still a lot of engagement. We don't know what the user numbers are now. Have to assume probably a lot less than that. So here's the question for the group. Is this a sign that Wordle-like game crazes are over or just that Hurdle didn't prompt enough people to stream more Spotify tracks? Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like it's the second one. That's what they wanted. They wanted people to use this to dis as another discovery method, which is why they're saying we're going to focus on other things. Jeff, did, did you ever play Hurdle or Wordle or any of these? I played Wordle. It's one of those things where I hate played for a long, long time, you know, and then finally had to... It was, we had a family text and we would go three, two, one, you know, I, and, uh, the first time I got in two, I made a meme local man. So I was mm -hmm. in two, <laughs> nice. made a big deal. But, um, <laughs> but at some point, like when the ones that are like, I can't even think of the right one, but it was like, oh, it's not funny. It's lummy or, you know, it's like different words, but all 50 words that all have the same, a uh, different first letter. And so it was just a guessing game. It would just frustrate me. I just, I couldn't do it. And Spotify, I can't do name that tune. So I'm not going to do that's hurdle. Well, so so Jeff, I am a Wordle. Uh, I'm a Stan. Uh, I play it every morning before I do anything else. Uh, my mom also does, and another friend of mine does, and we all we all sort of go like, okay, did you get it? How much did you get it in? Okay, now let's talk about what we used as our words. I am a very enthusiastic Wordle user. Hurdle was very difficult for me. I tried it a couple times, and I was like, I'm just not good at this. So it dropped off um, from my radar, but I like the idea of, you know, sort of the daily game. It just has to be part of your routine. If you don't enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. Hurdle was one of those things where I'm like, eh, it's just not for me. And I feel like Spotify probably felt that enough other people felt that way, especially since uh, Spotify is trying to, you know, throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall of getting people to, you know, pay for Spotify and stay within Spotify and have fun within Spotify when it comes to just, you know, something besides listening to a song here and there, or making a playlist or, you know, listening to a new album. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I think, I think the company probably said there's no real incentive for somebody who wants to play this game to be part of the rest of the Spotify experience of which it is, you know, ramping up all sorts of uh, new features. I mean, uh, they they hoped it would, but it didn't turn out to be that way. I, and and they're not telling us how many people are using it. But I bet there's some people in our audience who use Hurdle and are sad about this news. Sure. I say that because everybody covered this, like TechCrunch, Sarah Perez, The Verge, game developer, Variety, The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, I mean, part of that is just because it's Spotify doing something, and they're such a big company in the entertainment space. But but also, I feel like there was a little Schadenfreude of people are like, even if they didn't play Hurdle, they were sad that Spotify was ending it. Because I totally get what you're, you're saying about, you know, this this wasn't working for them. They hoped it would drive discovery. It didn't. So no, they shouldn't have to keep operating it. But even if there's only 1 million people still using it, um, that's a lot of people to, to suddenly let down. Like, I wish there was another way. I wish they could like open source it. Or, you know, well, you know, give it to pass it along to a foundation or sell it off to somebody. I don't know. I think what it's missing is maybe the community. Like Sarah mentioned how mm. she does the Wordle thing with her family. It's a it's an event. You know, maybe the the name, the the hurdle just didn't have that. And so you know, it just loses its muster after after a while. I mean, and maybe there's point. more people who like the idea of it than actually <laughs> like playing right. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say like I'm the best Wordle player ever, but like I'm pretty good at it. When it comes to music, I feel like I'm pretty well versed in music. It just it it wasn't the same game, but it was it was based on the same idea. So I think Spotify saying, eh, fewer and fewer people are using this um, and having fun with it. And that is not driving people to then go to the full track, right? Like, let's say you win Hurdle. The idea is that you, you figure out the track. So it's like, maybe you would like to go into Spotify and uh, use that track to create a playlist or all sorts of fun things that Spotify wants you to do. And, and I think a lot of people are probably like, I, just, I was just playing a game for like five minutes. And, you know, if that, that is, if that's not going to retain users, which you obviously want to do, 
then you put your resources elsewhere. Yeah, I think a lot of people are using this as a signal that Spotify is, you know, short on cash. Like they're they're even killing Hurdle, uh, and I I don't know that it really means that. Uh, yeah. They've they've added a lot of other discovery things like Smart Shuffle and that TikTok style feed and stuff. So that they are still trying things. I don't think this means that they're desperate. Didn't they just kill their clubhouse too? Their they bird? did though. Yeah. They Last did month. kill that too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, you know, Spotify is also... You I don't know, think that they, was terribly successful either, really. They had a, you know, redesigned mobile app recently with discovery feeds. And, you know, they're trying out Smart Shuffle that helps people with playlist recommendations, uh, po- uh, podcast autoplay options, an AI DJ um, that's supposed to learn what you mm. like over time and give you more recommendations, you know, based on AI. It's all very... Let's try things out. Let's see what people like. Let's that's see what bad. pertains users. Yeah. Well, that's not bad just, at all. Just because they try things and they don't work doesn't mean that they don't know what they're doing. Doesn't mean no, they no, do. God either, bless them. But, was yeah. it? Yeah. Would you, Sarah? Would you get the same songs as I would get on a given day? <laughs> I don't know, Jeff. Um, I would guess not, just because I have weird music tastes. But so then, who so knows? then the competition between us is missing, which is something that. Wordle kind of has built in. Yeah, because everybody's working on exactly the same right. right. Yeah. yeah, like music discovery is a very personal thing. It's not necessarily a fun, you know, game to you know play against others. Uh, well, here's another thing that's over. Be real. The New York Times has an article titled "They're Over Being Real." Uh, if you haven't run across it, Be Real is an app that leans into authenticity. Once a day, it prompts everyone at the same time to post a picture of what they're doing right then. and gives you two minutes to do it. Now, you can still post late. It doesn't stop you if you miss the two-minute window. It'll just mark the post as being however many minutes or hours late uh, you were when you finally posted. When the next prompt comes... All the previous day's posts are cleared out and you only see the current one. You're living in the moment. It had huge uptake and then it got stale. Sensor Tower says downloads of Be Real have been falling since September. Aptopia says daily use dropped 61% between October and March. And the problem seems to be that while we say we want authenticity, reality is is just a bunch of pictures of people sitting at their laptops. Uh, Not as compelling uh, for the consumer or for the poster. Uh, Jeff, I'm not sure. Have you used Be Real? I haven't, but my my kids have. To me, it never really made sense. It's kind of the opposite of what social media is. (laughs) You go to social media to be someone else, right? (laughs) I mean, I I guess that's what it was. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel like... So much of, let's say, Instagram, just to use an example, you know, people saying, well, this isn't real life. And, you know, the, uh, people are, you know, uh, spinning some sort of a narrative that they're having much more fun, you know, in Costa Rica than they really are. And all the all the filters make everybody, uh, you know, not real. I love the be real, uh, you know, the incentive to be like, OK, curate your friends and family. Uh, or, you know, whoever you, you know, want to follow and want to follow you and just be yourself. I personally found it to be, you know, getting that notification when I just was, you know, in the middle of doing dishes or just otherwise like, I don't want anybody to see me right now or even see what I'm doing. Um, that kind of turned me off, uh, at the beginning, but Tom, I know that you were having fun with it and you, you were enjoying the kind of, uh, non-Instagram version of life that you were getting from it. Yeah, I, I, lo- I love the idea of like, let's not set it up. Uh, let, let's actually see what you're doing. And I did get to the point where if I was just sitting at my desk, I'd be like, well, I'm going to hold off and do it when I'm not at my desk. So it's not always a picture the of my desk. Yeah. I would do some things where like, oh, in 15 minutes, I'm going to be do, doing something more interesting. I'll be at a concert or a baseball game. And, and I would tweak it that way. But I think that was still in the spirit of like, you're still not setting up the moment you're not instagramming you're you're mm-hmm. like this is actually what i'm up to and you don't have to you know to put on filters and all that and i did like that and i like to see what other people were doing uh my interest in it has been rejuvenated lately because Len Peralta just joined. Uh, so he's reacting to posts and I'm seeing new stuff from him. But actually, before Len joined, I was starting to just be like, OK, take my picture. And I wasn't looking at anybody else. It, it was starting to feel like a duty, you know, rather yeah, than, than something yeah. fun. So I think the best thing that came out of it 
is the Saturday Night Live skit mm -hmm. <laughs> making fun of of Be Real. It was uh, really, really funny. And what annoyed <laughs> me also about Be Real is when TikTok tried to copy it and put a kind of a Be Real thing into their app because I'm like, oh, I don't I just don't need this. <laughs> I don't but I need mean, it. but isn't that always the way it goes, right, Jeff? Like if TikTok's well, like, huh, Be Real seems to be popular with people. Let's just build this functionality into the app that is already popular. And that has worked for the, the bigger company, you know, in a lot of circumstances. And maybe that's what this is. Oh, no, I get that. I just met me personally. I was like, oh, I don't need to deal with this. It was like forced upon me as well. I, I purposely hadn't gotten to be real. I, you know, my daughter's had it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you're right. I mean, all the apps kind of, uh, kind of uh, chase after each other when something's popular. But, yeah. yeah. I think, Tom, you made a good point of like, well, I, I kind of always sitting at my desk. I don't want it to just be the same old monotonous thing. So there's that. I mean, that's reality, right? For a lot of us, <laughs> depending sure. on the time of day. I'm not really going to be doing anything too crazy. I'm not going to be on a roller coaster or whatever. I'm going to be sitting here, uh, you know, working um, or otherwise not doing anything super interesting. But also the, the, I don't know, I guess, I guess for me, notifications on my phone, sometimes I need them. Most of the time I do not because uh, they're invasive. I don't want to be tapped on the shoulder to be like, do this thing. If I don't have to do it for work, I'm not doing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just busy looking at my be real. Um, <laughs> what were you saying? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ryan Ozawa is at the dentist, apparently. Uh, Anthony Carboni is playing with his dog. So they're not all pictures of people at, at their laptops, you know. No, that's, no. That's good. And that's, I mean, yeah. that is, it's great to be real. Yeah. I, I just uh you know, you kinda you have to you have just, to buy into it and I'm say, just, I'm doing this. I'm just wondering if this is not the next wave of social media, as a lot of people thought. Uh, what is or should be real be changing and if it changes can it stay authentic or, or does it have to like spice things up and is it still being real i'm curious where it goes from here Hey, folks, uh, fighting misinformation online is a big deal. A lot of people talking about it. A lot of people wondering how they can do it. Well, we've got five ways you can do it in Tom's top five. I'm breaking down the top five things you need to know about technology every week. And this week, it's top five ways to fight misinformation. Go get it at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily tech news show. AI tools are moving into the optimization phase, less about they exist, oh my gosh, and, and more about, okay, what can we do with these? One example of that trend is the launch of the first open source instruction following large language model for commercial use. On Wednesday, Databricks released Dolly 2.0, which is confusing with Dolly, the image generator. This one is D-O-L-L-Y, and it's a text generator. Dolly 2.0 is open source, meaning you don't have to pay for an API. The training data was all crowdsourced from Databricks employees, so you know where it came from. That training data has been released under a Creative Commons license so that you can go take it and do other things with it if you want. You've got the license to do that. Everybody signed up. They know it's in there. Also on Wednesday, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman told told an audience at an MIT event, I think we're at the end of an era where it's going to be these giant models and we'll just start making them better in other ways. He, he compared it to the gigahertz race of the early part of the computer era. He's like, we're not looking at the numbers anymore. We're looking at the uses. That's why he said they haven't even begun training GPT-5 yet. There's just lots to do on GPT-4. And there's lots of room for other projects outside of OpenAI like Dolly 2.0. Now that's the high level view what about practical uses? What are actual people doing with these artificial people? Uh, Jeff is using generative AI in his productions. Jeff, how is this helping you? I love ChatGPT. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's really the greatest thing ever. But what I use it for, or I think like a lot of times when you're watching these uh, tutorials and stuff like that, it's like, uh, just go and ask it. Give me five topics for my podcast. You know, it's like, that's, to me, that's not the right way to use it. Like, don't don't ask for it to give you back generic stuff. What it, I think it's great for and what I use it for a lot is helping me improve the stuff that I create. You know, so I'm a big fan of, you know, we still have to we still have to use our brains. Yeah. Our right. Creativity uh, that, that we were blessed with. And so but 
we all can use a little help, right? So you can, you, anyone can proofread something, do anything. So like with my podcast, for example, what I'll do is I'll write my show notes. I'll take notes on all the different points that I want people to understand occurred in this particular uh, episode. And then what I do is then I created a prompt and I'll take that to chat GPT and I'll say, Hey, master copywriter, I need a few things from you. You know, so take what I wrote and SEO optimize it for Tom Merritt or whatever the episode is. Right. And then rewrite these bullet points uh, for that. And I'll give them some guidance. Do you just say SEO optimize it and, and that's good enough? You, you... I say, like I would say, uh, um, SEO optimize it. Like, so one I just did was for John Billings. He's uh -huh. a AIDS player for the monkeys. So I'll say SEO optimize it for John Billings and the monkeys. So I'll give it uh -huh, some okay. things to pivot on. Yeah, yeah, Because those yeah. are the things I think one of But it understands SEO. You don't have to say, make this show up in a search engine or get all verbose about it. Yes, it'll it'll write it so it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. helpful for those tools. And then I say, all right, now that you have that information, you know, provide me three versions of a killer summary that'll pull someone in. You know, and I usually ask for more versions that I'm going to use because, mm -hmm. you know, some are better than others and some have ideas. You know, they scatter the ideas across. So I think a that's good. a really good point about these tools is that uh, it's not the only, it's not the first response that's the best. They'll have different responses, even with the same prompts. Yes. And the great thing to do is one of the tools that I learned later is that when you build out, if you write something out and you generate it, and you're like, mm, don't necessarily reply to that the response to go, Hey, can you try it again? But with uh, less verbs, uh -huh. don't do that. <laughs> you go to the original prompt and there's like a little edit button, which I didn't uh, realize was there for a while. And you edit the original one and then uh -huh. just have it regenerate it. That way it doesn't start to get confused with what are you referring to and all mm -hmm, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can just go right back to the source. And then, but I also, I have it do the summaries and then I say, create, um, in my WordPress, it has a SEO thing where it's like 160, character description and like a 60 character title. So I say, make uh -huh. me three of each of those. I say, provide me five great tweets that, you know, highlight the guest and end with listen mm -hmm. here and I'll mm -hmm. insert a URL. So it'll kind of format it that way. Then I'll say, give me some title suggestions. <laughs> it's not very clever with title suggestions. It's always uh, the tech news today, colon Tom Merritt. <laughs> it's like, I even, no matter how much I try to tell it not yeah. to do that. And that's all it can do. We and get our I'll, title suggestions from the audience. So what you're saying is the audience is safe. They will not be replaced by the, the, the audience Good. is not going to be replaced by AI. You know, then I'll be like, hey, give me some hashtags. And I tell it how to give it to me. So I can just copy and paste it into my first comment and, and Instagram. And I say, add these. I want you to just add these, but don't count them in the 10. You know, and then give me a couple just teasers I can use on LinkedIn or Facebook and stuff like that. So then I have like this whole variety of what I wrote but then it rewrites it and makes it better. And a lot of times it comes up with kind of tweaks on it. And sometimes it comes up with an, an analysis and pulls out something that, um, you know, uh, I didn't necessarily think of, or I, uh -huh. you know, or like, oh, that is a theme. I didn't even, you know, cause sometimes you're just too much. It recognizes it. things. Yeah. That's interesting. Does well, it ever add things that weren't there? <laughs> it does. It does. I actually had to, I, it's funny you say that in the thing I write, Please cover cover all topics mentioned in the info provided, but please do not make up any facts. Please just stick to the facts provided. Interesting. Because <laughs> sometimes I, I did something once where I was like, hey, write this. Oh, I was like, here's how to log into Facebook. It was for something else. And it started to add way more information than I had given it. And I was like, whoa, because it probably just had been trained on it, so it, it knew about it. But like, you know, the interesting thing is if you don't like the results, you just say regenerate again. And it's like, it's one of those, it's like the butterfly effect type thing. Mm -hmm. So all these different things change it. And then it impacts, even if you're just regenerated a second later, it's like you get completely different response. So it's cool. Those are good tips though. That, that, that there's, I, I picked up a couple of things just now uh, that, yeah. that I didn't realize you could do. I mean, I feel like uh, this is not unlike the way that we as humans collaborate on DTNS rundowns every day, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, Sarah writes something, but maybe I kind of know a little bit more about the topic or I, I know where I want to go with it. So just give me a place to, to, to jump off of mm -hmm. um, and then we can check each other's work. Yeah. Or, or vice versa. Like I, I'll write something. I did this today. I was like, look at this question. I don't think it's very good, but I bet you could make it better because you just need a second pair of eyes exactly. or, or a second pair of AI brains. So exactly. The, the other thing I started doing is like, if you take, um, take the title you have and say, is this title any good? And then just put in the title. 
and it'll say, yeah, I think that's pretty good. It explains that this is who it's about and it should be compelling enough and punctu- wow. and all the punctuality is correct. Punctu- uh, you know, and so it's, you know, there's like all those kind of little things. So I think if you look at ChatGPT as your, it's kind of like your little, you know, a little assistant, your little buddy. Friendly um, assistant. Yeah, mm-hmm. friendly assistant. But not it's, the guy that clippy, comes up with the but ideas. Good. Right. Yeah. If, right. right. I mean, sometimes it's just, oh, uh, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but most of the times it's not. So, uh, you know, if I'm but sending that's an email. Like, that's how humans are too. I know. You know, you might say, well, thank you, Sarah, but no thanks. I'm not going to use your <laughs> suggestion. But you know what? I appreciate your input. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just like anything. If it like gets a certain angle that it wants to take and they're like, that's not the angle I want to take. <laughs> you know, you have to kind of go back and kind of like say, all right, focus it on this or something like that. And, mm-hmm. um, it, yeah, it's, but overall though, it's, I think it's extremely helpful. There's just a, so many different ways you can, another kind of way is like, if I'm emailing someone at like a sales email and let's say Tom hasn't responded to me in 50 times, I'll put like the emails that I've sent and I'll say, Tom hasn't responded to me like for months. Can you rewrite this email <laughs> and knowing that and to me to try and get his attention again? And then yeah. it'll rewrite it so that you can create a follow up that has. I really uh, apologize for yeah, that. Yeah, well, I know. I just, I didn't mean to call you out live <laughs> yeah, on your no. show, but yeah. <laughs> but it was a good example. So. <laughs> Um, well, a good example of something that you may want is the Asus ROG Phone 7, which mm-hmm. is a gaming phone available for pre-order now in Europe, starting at 999 euros or 1399 euros for the ultimate version. You might say, okay, well, what is this? Both versions have a 6.78 inch screen with a 165 hertz refresh rate. They run on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processors with a 6,000 milliamp battery. Both have some fun gaming features like vapor chamber cooling, a boron nitride thermal compound to cool the CPU. The ultimate version has more RAM storage and increased thermoelectric cooling with the Aero Active Cooler 7 accessory that can lower the temperature of the surface of the device as much as 25 degrees, so pretty significant. But Andy Boxall over at Digital Trends points out that the video and audio quality make it a great multimedia phone as well. It has two front-facing speakers, and in the ultimate version, the cooling accessory also includes a subwoofer. He also raved about Snapdragon Sound and Dirac Virtuo's signal, digital signal processing, which makes headphone audio sound great. And the ROG Phone 7 also has a headphone jack. Ah, uh, you just sold it to like a dozen people in the audience. I know. I saved it best for last. <laughs> headphone jack. Yeah, I, I liked this review because it, I, I, a gaming headphone it has an audience. I know that, but it's not a huge one. But if if you look at this and be like, oh, for for watching, you know, uh, videos, watching YouTube, maybe even mm-hmm. movies if you're on a plane because you you don't want to take up a lot of space, stuff sure. like that. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a pretty decent phone. Good job, Asus. Also, good job, Len Peralta. You have been illustrating today's show. You went high concept today. I like this. <laughs> Explain uh, what you drew today. Sure thing. Well, first, you know, it's it's been a very sad week. Uh, and this only added to the sadness, uh, knowing that I just joined Be Real last week and it's being done. <laughs> We're already talking about a bit. Yes, it's uh, not done. I don't know. It's, it's not I, done. You, know, you Spotify, can revi- revitalize it. Spotify Killing Hurdle, which is I do that every night with Wordle and also Framed. Um, but also the biggest, the saddest news of this week, of course, is that uh, Mad Magazine uh, artist uh, Al Jaffe passed mm. away at age 102. I don't know how much uh, uh, Mad Magazine has been influential on my life, probably a lot. Uh, so this afternoon I'm getting ready for the show and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to do a Mad Fold-In in honor of of, uh, of Al Jaffe. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, this is a DTNS Fold-In. Um, it actually does work. So, uh, if you want to know what the answer is and what see the fold in, uh, you're just going to have to go. I'm not going to give anything out here. You're going to have to go and explain check the fold in if, if somebody's never, never sure run thing. into it. Cause it's a so, fun concept. So the fold in is something that happened on the back of mad magazine. Al Jaffe was the creator of it. Basically it was a response to the center fold in playboy. Instead of folding out, you fold it in. And when you fold it in, you got a totally new piece of art. Uh, with also a joke in there, which is really amazing. So 
Uh, the fact that I pulled this together in two hours is just sort of kind of crazy. But if I you love that it see, actually <laughs> folds too. That's great. If, if you want to see the answer, uh, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, where you will get this image immediately just for joining and becoming backing me at the DTNS lover level. You can also go the old fashioned way, purchase it. Uh, from my online store, you can fold it over that way or order a print from me and I will pre-fold it for you and uh, you can see what the Ooh, answer pre-folded is. pre-folded by Len. <laughs> or no, I don't want to take the fun out of it. I won't pre-fold it. You can fold it on your own and see what it is. But uh, but check it out. Thank you so much. It's over at LenPeraldoStore.com. Good stuff as always, Len. Also good stuff from you, Jeff Dwoskin. So nice to have you on the show today. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, you can keep up with me at... Uh Classic Conversations. That's my podcast. You can get it on, uh, there it is. Uh, Jeffisfunny.com is the uh, website. Also, classic-conversations.com. You can listen to me talk to famous people like Lou Grant, Tom Merritt, Burt Ward. (laughs) If you like pop culture, if you like uh, the Orville, you guys like the Orville, I had a few people from there on. That's, uh, you know, just all across the board. A lot of fun things. Um, Yeah. So. Well, we are so glad to have you on with us today. Uh, we also want to thank a brand new boss that we got over the last week. It was a little bit of a slow week for Patreon, but Russ is our new patron. Russ just Russ started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Russ. Good to have you. Yeah, be like Russ. Join in the Patreon. You get a bunch of cool extra stuff. You get some stuff early. You get editor's desks from me. uh, And patrons get the extended show Good Day Internet. It's Friday, so we're going to have a little fun on Good Day Internet and do a Roger Tech Quiz. This one will test our panelists' knowledge of the intersection of music and social media from YouTube to TikTok. So please stick around, (laughs) patrons, to join in on the fun. It will be fun. I'm just not good at this. Uh, okay, but yes. That's do, the fun. Do a stick- <laughs> well, yeah, when you win, Tom, that's fun for you. No, but nobody just- wins. It's all about the fun. Well, somebody wins. Somebody has to win. That's nobody has point. to win. That's the point of a quiz. Uh, you can join the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. That is when DTNS is live. Of course, you can always catch us after the fact, but we'd love to have you join us live if you can. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live is where to find out more about that. We will be back Monday with Justin Robert Young joining us. Have a great weekend, all. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and host, Rich Straffolino. Video producer, Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language, host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. News host, writer, and producer, Jen Cutter. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our moderators, Beatmaster, W.S. Goddess One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Gar- Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Contributors for this week's shows include Justin Robert Young, Scott Johnson, and Patrick Norton. And our guests this week were Dr. Enrique Rayo and Jeff Dwoskin. And thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>